rotten luck. Looks like you can't afford it. You know what I think the game is doing with these students who are selling me cards? Every student is selling me the exact same card at the same time, and when I get that one, then they're all selling me a different card, but once again, none of the students are offering anything different between themselves. And the game just goes through a list of cards that you can only get from other students, as opposed to whatever you find lying around in lessons or Fred and George's shop or wherever. But that's alright, because speaking of Fred and George's shop, we're going to go exploring and have fun. But first we need to buy the passwords to unlock the eight hidden password protected portraits. Rotten luck. Looks like you can't afford it. See? It's the card with the Chinese alchemist again. He's selling me the same card that the girl downstairs wanted to sell me a minute ago. Even the girl who was outside in the grounds near the end of the last episode was trying to sell me that exact same card too. Wait a minute. I just now realized that friend George's shop is behind the portrait to get into the Gryffindor dorms. How are other students accessing this place? Or do they even have access? Oh, fuck off with this torch impeding my walking path. Afraid you don't have enough pumpkin pasties to buy that. At least it's a different card. So the girl from downstairs made her way up here too? Well, she is in Gryffindor, so. This room is fantastic. I collected about a billion 30 bots every flavor beans. Crikey, Ron, you look exhausted. Those final exams got the better. You know you want it, Harry. And what a price, too! Great, it's a deal. Hang on a second. I can only buy one pumpkin okay, pasty at a time? Sure Why isn't there an option to set the quantity you want to purchase, and then it just multiplies the number of beans you need to buy it with? So it's not just a problem with the cards. Everything has that issue. Actually, now that I think about it, I should have known that already. In fact, I also just remembered, just like the students throughout Hogwarts sell you the same cards at the same time, I remember from the third episode how no matter which one of these scrolls I approached, it would always be for the exact same portrait as well with the game probably just running down a sequential list, not allowing you to buy anything out of the predetermined order. What the fuck is the point of that? That's just annoying. Just got this password. Not sure what's behind the portrait, though. Sounds good. I'll buy it. We're not supposed to be selling this one. Gets you into a very secret area. So, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have enough cauldron cakes to buy the next two passwords. Rather than spending time and beans purchasing them here one at a time, I'll just go through the first six portraits and come back here later. I'm sure I'll get plenty of cauldron cakes by then. That's the same woman I just saw on the portrait password scroll mere seconds ago. What a coincidence. You want it, Harry. And what a price, too! Seriously, I can't believe they didn't include an option to buy more than one at a time. What a shit brick. I think I'll check out the dorms real quick. Oh my god. God, the Gryffindor insignia on the fireplace is backwards. Look at those letters. Unbelievable. How would he even make that mistake, even if it was by accident? Did someone put that on there with their eyes closed? Alright, let's get started. The fuck you looking at? Hmm. I think we'll need to buy a password from Fred and George's shop to see what's behind this portrait. Okay, wow. I already forgot which portraits I do and don't have access to. I guess I'll just go down the floors one by one and try shit at random. If we want to see what's behind this portrait, we'll have to buy the password from Fred and George's shop. Seriously. Alright then. At least this should be easy to remember. Two portraits, one each on the top two floors. I can't believe our third year is almost over. Oh. I just need to buy two more portrait passwords from Fred and George's shop. Then it's goodbye. So as I walk downstairs and get further away from the student who started talking to me, the volume of her voice stays the same even as I walk into this next room. 
Sure, just scatter the beans as far apart from each other as possible. That's nice. What, Ron and Hermione aren't going to follow me inside? Although now that I'm thinking about it, I think imps are one of those creatures that we've never fought together as a group. Unlike Pixies and the Flying Pages and the Hogwarts Express and Peeves like three fucking times. These flag banner things, they're all over the school and it didn't occur to me for most of this time to cast Depulso at them, so I don't know how much I've missed out there. And it's worse than that because I think I mentioned as far back as episode 2 to remember to cast at banners at least. I don't know if I ever mentioned flags specifically, but they're close enough to looking like banners so I should have known better than to forget about those too. But yeah, these hidden areas behind the password protected portraits have a vast number of goodies inside them. It's crazy. Alright, let's see what's in here. Nice. That'll definitely help me purchase the seventh password from the shop. I think that's probably all there is to do in this little area though. Time to rejoin Ron and Hermione. Wait a minute. How did I miss this chest? Have I even been on this floor yet? Hey, Harry! Over here! Uh, no, thank you. I'm just passing by getting shit. Fuck, I didn't want to talk to him. I've got some collector's cards for sale, if you're interested. Oh, I take that back. I can actually afford this one now. Only one card this time? Alright, goodbye. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've not been on this floor at all, at least during this playthrough. It just doesn't look recently familiar to me. Does this area only have a save book in it? That's handy, I guess, but it's boring. What's the point? Alright, now this next portrait is quite a small room. Holy shit. I guess one of the things I don't really remember from previous times that I've played this game is just how generous some of these chests or areas in general can be. That's fantastic for me, though. I can be surprised all over again. And again, I don't have much of this place memorized. I don't know where any of these portraits actually are, so I'm just checking each floor. And I just remembered that this floor is where the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom is located, but at least I discovered this little thing here. Ooh, sorry Ron. That's the kind of shit that can break your neck, just like falling from great heights in the Carpe Retractum challenge. Now none of these portraits ever move, which is okay because that might be too demanding for your average PC back in 2004 and too much work to justify making the game resemble the source material ever so slightly more. But interestingly enough, the fat lady's portrait has some subtle animation to it, so that's a little weird. I forget where this hidden Lumos wall takes me, or if I've even been in here before. Oh, okay, so I have been in here before. No, don't fucking bounce backwards, Harry Wiener. I'm trying to get... move on and... Ugh. Seriously, why do some suits of armor let you cast a pulso at them if they're not going to do anything? Okay, found the next portrait. Well, exploring these areas is pretty fun. You know what's not fun, though? Getting analingus from a Dementor. Imagine getting your soul sucked out of your asshole. Your consciousness would fade with a pathetic gasp for air along with a long, slow, whistling fart. 
fuck. More imps. Alright, come at me, you animated shit stains. That was quite possibly the worst throw I ever saw. Never mind, I just fucking missed too. How in the fuck did that cracker blow up two other crackers, hurt me, but not hurt any of the imps? That's bullshit. Stop laughing at me, you demonic incarnations of sentient ass crust. Go back to Mars. Or wherever you came from. Or better yet, maybe go land on the sun and see how well that works out for you. Fucking shitheads. You know, it's one thing not to be able to properly activate and land on a Spongify tile quickly enough if you're in the middle of a flight trajectory after being launched by a previous Spongify tile. It's quite another to fuck up the same process when you're simply doing a running jump and only using your own two feet. And I saw those two fire crabs like a minute beforehand anyways, so this wasn't even remotely surprising when I finally came up here. Oh well. Well, other than a cauldron cake up above, there's no other levels to land on. Okay, I stand corrected. That was one hell of a jump. Okay, where to next? I doubt there would be another portrait on this floor, so I guess I'll go down one more flight of stairs soon. Oh, rubbish. It's locked. I can't remember where that even leads to. Oh, I remember now. That's where Hermione exited the library in that cutscene after she got the book for Buckbeak's defense. And there's our next portrait down there. Dirigible. What kind of a word is that? Dirigible. Wait, three locks? Yes! Ron and Hermione get to accompany me this time around. But why this time and not the other times? Also, what's the point of having locks in the wizarding world if any student can just effortlessly unlock them with a spell? Especially if it's a spell that first years can learn early on during their starting term. So it's not like these locked areas are only accessible by elder students who are presumably more mature because Alhamora is such an advanced spell. Because it's not. And yet in the first movie, that was the first offense. Hide the three-headed dog behind a door with a lock that didn't have an anti alahamora defense added to it. This would be like a muggle school giving each student a skeleton key that can unlock any door. Why would you do that? Just lock everything you need to lock and don't teach the students about the anti alahamora charm until the end of their seventh year so that they can securely lock their own shit up when they're adults. Okay, so... we're halfway done now? Well, off to the dungeons then. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Yeah, for a second I forgot that I already went down there. At least I think I have. Oh well, that's just the bottom of the grand staircase. There's probably nothing much down there other than a lot of empty and unused floor space. Now, the dungeon area. I'm surprised I haven't actually come down here even once yet. Guess I should check this real quick. Again, with casting a spell that doesn't actually work. I swear that just happens at random. How can it be so cold down here with all these torches lighting the place up? This student doesn't want to talk to me? What's with the shrug? Why are you standing here if you don't have cards for me? You're just gonna keep stepping side to side like that while I bump into you and invade your personal space? Asshole. Vesuve. That dude looked like Zeus. I wonder if there's any overlap between Greek mythology and the lore of the Harry Potter world. The wizarding world is supposed to exist in parallel with the real world we muggles live in, so... We should still have the same history that we actually study and analyze in real life. Maybe Zeus wasn't a god, but instead a powerful wizard in ancient Greece that was able to control lightning, a form of magic that's been lost to the ages and has yet to be rediscovered. 
he was making himself known to ancient Greek muggles, then they probably wouldn't have understood what they were seeing and just assumed that Zeus was indeed a god rather than a simple human like them, aside from some special abilities. From there, he has his offspring and they pass magical blood and abilities down to each other and so on and so forth until the legendary mythology is what it is known to be today. Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, I guess it makes sense to have these monsters come out of random chests occasionally since they're tiny and would fit inside, but you know what else likes to live in small, dark, cramped spaces? A boggart. Now, what if there was ever a time when Harry opened a chest and a Dementor just flew out of there? That would be weird. And it would only have to happen after you've learned the Patronus charm from Professor Lupin first. And the Boggart would, of course, take different forms depending on who you're playing as, so you could bring back the spiders from the last game if you were controlling Ron. As for Hermione, I don't know what you would do about her, since in the book she seems to fear bad grades more than anything else. See, I told you I'd be getting plenty of cauldron cakes in these hidden areas and would be able to save up for buying the next two passwords. All according to plan. I guess you never need a password for exiting a portrait, though. What's the deal with the other students down here? Are they serving detention and have to stand silently for a half an hour? I can't wait to see what's behind a portrait of a man sneezing. So, one chest needs to be opened once, and the other needs to be opened twice? I know I'm really nitpicking here, but the asymmetry just screams out at me at times. I don't like asymmetrical things sometimes. Alright, here we go. Did I seriously just walk right off that platform? I can't believe I did that. And there wasn't even a reason for me to go over there in the first place. That's embarrassing as shit right there. Not sure why one of them took only one hit to simultaneously knock over and push over the edge, and the other one took two hits to do both things. I guess they were standing in different spots. See, it happened again here. It's actually pretty satisfactory to flip a fire crab over and knock it into the pit with one hit of Recta Sempra. I just wish I better knew how to do it. Well, back to Fred and George's shop for the last two passwords. Alright, might as well take these portrait shortcuts on the way back. It's pretty easy. Why can't you guys just appear in a standing position like a normal person instead of appearing three feet in midair? Oh, fuck you, Ron. Oh, fuck me. I keep forgetting that suit of armor never does anything. Hi, Fred. Hi, George. We're not supposed to be selling this one. Gets you into a very secret area. All right. Crap, that was more than half of my cakes already. Sorry, Harry. You don't have enough cultured cakes to buy that. Shit, I guess I have to buy... nine more. Oh, fuck no, 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 no. Whenever I open this menu, I just assume that the large X means close the menu or cancel or whatever, so that's a hazard on its own. One of these days, I'm going to fool myself and lose some progress, and then I'll subsequently lose my shit. Excellent choice. Note the exquisite quality. Exquisite quality? They're all the fucking same, regardless of whether I buy it here or find it laying on the ground in a dirty dungeon. Great, it's a deal. At least I know I have enough beans to buy all these. And what a price too! Yeah, I'll take it. And they're all 50 beans each, which is kinda expensive early on in the game, so to buy nine more of these, I'm gonna have to spend 450 beans just to get this last damn password. It's like a quarter of all my beans that I currently have. These are very much in demand. You better buy it before we run out. 
I don't think they can ever actually run out of things like chocolate frogs, pumpkin pasties, and cauldron cakes. Yeah, I'll take it. Those are so popular, they're hard to keep in stock. Uh-huh. Sure they are. I don't think too many students are buying these in bulk due to the expensive price and the inconvenience of only being able to buy any item one at a time. Didn't even know we had that one. Seriously. Don't you keep a list of your inventory written down somewhere? I'm sure you can even do some kind of magic so that the list auto-updates itself every time someone buys something. So you always know exactly how many you have left. A mystery, this one. But I'm sure it's worth twice the price. Well, in that case, thank you for selling it so cheaply, I guess. I'm pretty sure I visited all six that I previously had, but I just want to be sure. Wait, these had directions and locations this whole time? Oh shit, wish I'd known that. Oh well, still a bit useful at this point. Although all I had to do was remember that the two remaining portraits were on the top two floors. So, I'm not gonna use any of those help full hands. Wait, it's not going to open now? What the fuck, man? Oh, okay, the game was just fucking with me. Jesus. Wait a minute here. They use the same portraits right next to each other? I can understand making only so many portraits and reusing them throughout the castle, since it's not realistic to make hundreds of unique ones, but don't reuse the same ones in a single tiny room or hallway for fuck's sake. Why would you do that? At least Ron and Hermione are here to help me out with these pixies. Although, since I'm much faster at recasting a spell than the computer is, I end up doing like two-thirds of the work despite being just one-third of the team. Okay, move Hermione. Gotta see what's up there now. Aw, I missed a couple. I'll just activate this and jump down from the ledge all over again for this one bean that I'll probably never need this late in the game. A bit premature with casting that spell, huh, Harry? Sure, it's my fault, but I can still blame him. A flawless capture of all the ejected items from the chest without making a mess on the ground. Perfect. And just like that, I have 16 cauldron cakes again. You know, the Depulso spell symbol does actually look like an open book. And why does Depulso leave that afterglow behind for a few seconds? I don't think any other spell in this game does that. That chest spewed a bunch of stuff to the side as well as forwards toward me, but because it was surrounded by walls, it just bounced all over the place. Finally, just one more portrait to go through. This had better be good after spending two minutes manually buying enough cauldron cakes one at a time. Well, I guess it is going to be pretty good if this place is large enough to warrant loading its own map area separately. Did the bookcase leave a permanent shadow behind? How do you not break your glasses several times a year just by jumping on spongify tiles and flying through narrow stone archways where you smash in your face half the time? This room seems to have a liking for suits of armor. I wonder how many students come by here. I mean, if Fred and George already know about these places and knew the passwords for these areas, then they've surely explored them already. I don't buy that they supposedly don't know what's behind a couple of these portraits, that's bullshit. And presumably they have multiple copies of the password because they're never advertised as a one-of-a-kind item, and other students have mentioned buying passwords, or at least an intention to buy them. 
So these chests and suits of armor and other things must refill themselves for everyone who comes by here, but at the same time, they also remember who's already visited so that they can't double dip. Fancy. Three suits of armor that are looking down on you. Look at all this shit raining down. And I thought I hit this one already. Okay, third time's the charm. What the fuck? I keep hitting that slight edge protruding out of the wall beneath its feet. Yeah, nutshot! Took like five tries, but I finally got the fucker to unleash his load on me. That is a bunch of cauldron cakes, which now I probably will never need. I really wish I could have had this access to this 8th portrait earlier. It would have made buying access to other portraits a lot easier. But I guess they knew that and wanted the most rewarding portraits to be the last ones you were able to buy. I don't know what the point is if you can't use this stuff to buy more things afterwards. And yes, I know there's a cabinet there, but sometimes I like to check for less obvious stuff first. These fucking books again. Does anyone ever read these? Probably not, and that's why they're so angry. There must have been like two dozen of these things inside that cabinet that I unleashed. In fact, I think the doorway behind me was locked by a gate. It should have probably tipped me off that there was going to be a fight that I couldn't bypass instead of just another optional room with only rewards inside it. And were those three chocolate frogs just sitting there this whole time? I think they were. Though I guess if you're the kind of person that routinely gets hurt badly during these fights, you could just run up and grab one before continuing on. What were you doing up there, Ron? Eh, who cares? Okay, I just want to double check myself here, although I'm pretty certain I've been in all eight areas now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Zeus. Or whoever. Yeah, yeah. The, the sick looking. Stomach egg guy. For fuck's sake, I nearly tried to close the menu again with that large X that actually just closes the whole game without saving. It's really annoying that they made the layout like that. Sure, there's a confirmation dialogue box asking if you're sure you want to quit, but still. Well, this was a longer episode, but it didn't pass the half hour mark, so I guess I'm alright with that. <laughs>